usually is something that will attach itself to you and generally not kill you, at least for a long time. Why? Because it's like a parasite. It doesn't want you dead. Why? Because it's living off of you. And so it wants you to survive. Now, it, it takes away from your life. It makes you weak. And now the bad part about it is that a spirit of infirmity can also invite other spirits of infirmity in. And when it does that, now it's like having many parasites and the body, either body or soul, depending on where this thing is going. Now, you can have different spirits. I know I'm kind of bouncing all over the place. At least I kind of feel like I am. But you can have a spirit of infirmity in your soul and you can have a different spirit of infirmity in your body. One usually got there first and invited the other one in. And so they will stake out territories. But the more and the longer that you let that thing stay there, the more it will affect you. If it is in your soul, many times it goes to the soul first. And then once it gets a hold of the soul, it either invites more in or it expands to include the body. When it expands to include the body, it makes the body weaker and weaker and weaker. And what you'll notice is a vast array of sickness and ailments and things like that. And it seems to be one thing after another. One thing after another. None of them kill you, but it's one thing after another. Now, sometimes they can all pile up at the same time. In other words, one thing can come in, that'll make you weaker. And then another one will come in, and it'll make you weaker. And it'll be two different things, but it makes you weaker. And you can have, well, there's no limit to how many of these spirits you can have in different areas or in different manifestations, and yet I would say the only limit to that would be how much your body or your soul can take. Because at some point, your body will die because it is just overwhelmed by these things continuing. Now, the thing is, usually these things don't come in and overwhelm you at one time. It takes a while. It's a progress or a progression and continues on. Now, now, notice what we're talking about because this is almost identical. Well, yeah, pretty, pretty identical to how a stronghold takes place. Why? Because the devil doesn't have anything new. He, all he does is change his tactics a little bit, whether he's attacking the soul or he's attacking the body. So if he attacks the soul, he's going to do that also. Usually, first, he'll hit you with the spirit of infirmity in your soul. What does that mean? That means you start investigating other things and you start looking at other things. You start making excuses and you start separating the spiritual, your spiritual walk with your secular or your regular life walk, which if you can separate those two, you don't have a spiritual walk. And so, but many times you'll look at it and as you start looking at these other things, then what that's doing is it is shooting these, as we would say, what the Bible would call these fiery darts and your shield is not up taking care of them, so they're hitting you in your soul, and they're starting to put into your soul uh, these thoughts that are the basis of strongholds. And these strongholds get built. So strongholds work the same way that spirits of infirmity work on a person's body. Right? So now what we're seeing is that the, the more a person thinks about it, and then especially if they start talking about it, <clears throat> then... When they start talking about it, now they have taken thought by saying. And so whenever they take that thought, now it becomes a part of a stronghold, and then everything, it changes the way you see things, and you will start building up a stronger and stronger stronghold in your mind, which usually has to do with wrong ideas, wrong thoughts, wrong doctrines, things like that. Now, it doesn't always have to be religious. The, the enemy's one of his chief tactics is using, using things along the lines of, well, what we would call today psychology. Why? Because he's trying to present things that would stand against or exalt itself against the knowledge of God. So he can't come in and just get you to say, well, I don't believe God and I don't believe the Bible and I don't believe anything the Bible says. So he tries to come in with other stuff to put seeds in you that you will start to talk about and let those seeds grow. And what that does is it builds a defense in your mind against the word of God, right? 
And the longer you let that go on and the stronger it gets, the bigger stronghold you have. Now, that's exactly. Now, that's, that's in the area of the soul, obviously, with strongholds, as we're talking about. And these strongholds are not principalities. Strongholds are thoughts and wrong doctrines, wrong thoughts, we could say, and wrong doctrines, wrong ideas, wrong philosophies. That's what strongholds are made out of. And you pull down strongholds. Now, listen, we don't pull down principalities. Okay, why? Because we're seated above them. You don't pull down what you're above. You put your foot on. Do you, do you understand that? And so when he tells us to pull down strongholds, he is not talking about principalities or spirits. He's talking about changing your mind. He's talking about you dismantling the, the, some of the psychological type things that maybe you've learned or been taught, which is one of the reasons why in most uh, schools of higher education, as they would call it, which is amazing because it's not higher at all. It's actually lower and devilish. And, but that when you get into these things, they almost always require for any degree, some degree of psychology. Why? Because they want to get those seeds into your mind so they can get you away from the Bible and keep you uh, insulated against the Bible. Right? Now, that's why many parents scrimp and save and borrow and everything else to try to send their kids to college and they send their kids away Christians and they come back atheists. Why? Because you submit under that level of teaching. If you sit in something and you listen to it, then you are submitting to it and giving it place in your life. 